Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at one of the weirdest bases ever to come out of the Ernie Ball Music Man shop. Let's check it out. This is the Ernie Ball Music Man Big Al 5. Now, I've already done a very short video on this, uh, probably about last year or something like that. However, I've never done a real full in-depth video on it, and that's what we're going to do today. Be sure to hit the bathroom now, because there is a lot to unpack here, and we're going to go over all the different pickup configuration and tones that we can get out of this space. But first, let's go over the specs. For the body, we have an African mahogany body finished in a vintage white. And we have a bolt-on maple neck with rosewood fingerboard. It's a 34-inch scale, 22-fret neck with a 44 and a half millimeter nut width, I believe. We also have a matching headstock, which is a very nice touch. For the bridge, this is a standard Music Man style bridge. It has 17 and a half millimeter spacing, and this is the pre-Stingray Special bridge. So we have the. Uh, large uh, screw things over here on the sides of the bridge. Um, it's the same bridge that's featured in the bongo as well. Um, the Big Al is a very interesting bass electronics wise. Um, I'm going to go over the specs of this bass, but please note that they also made a single humbucker version of this bass as well as a four string model. So there were a few different variations. However, this is the one that we have. This is the triple single coil model. And I believe there is a ghost coil in there to prevent any sort of a noise during any single pickup uh, operation. So for the electronics, we have again, three single coil pickups. We have a master volume, master tone control, when in passive mode, and then we have a four band EQ. Now the tone control is only active when the preamp is bypassed. And you may be wondering, you know, how do you select the pickups or how do you bypass the preamp? Well, we have four buttons right here, four little push buttons. Uh, when pushed in, they engage a particular function. The first three buttons are for each one of these pickups here. The default configuration with all three buttons out is the back two pickups in series. It's a very nice sound. And then when you push each individual button in, that will engage the individual pickup. So if I just press the first button, it will be the top pickup here. If I only press the second button, it will be the second pickup. And we can also engage any two pairs of pickups as well, and all three together. So we can engage the first and second pickup, first and third pickup, or second and third pickup, or we can press all three buttons down together and engage all three pickups in parallel. The fourth button engages the preamp. When the button is not depressed, we're only able to use the passive tone control and not the four band EQ here. That means we can run this thing passively without any batteries. This four band EQ is an 18 volt preamp, and we'll see that when we turn around the base. But, uh, yeah, we have two stacked knobs here for a high mid, low mid, and bass and treble controls. Those are engaged when we push in the uh, preamp button, and we get to play with that preamp. That was a lot, right? <laughs> so right off the bat, this is a pretty complicated instrument, especially if you're coming from a standard like P-Bass or something like that. There's a lot to take in here. Now let's go ahead and turn this bass around. Around back, it's pretty sparse. We have an 18 volt battery compartment and a five screw neck attachment, similar to that of a Sterling or a Stingray Special. We also can see the maple neck here. This is a really nice maple neck with the proprietary USA Music Man finish. It's very nice. I believe they use a gunstock oil and it makes for a very smooth playing experience. And up at the headstock, it is finished in a light gloss and we have the standard Music Man style tuners. These are not the lightweight tuners that are featured in something like the Stingray Special. These are just the uh, regular style tuners. In regards to weight, this bass comes in at around 10 pounds, pretty much on the dot. It's not the lightest bass in the world, but it's not the heaviest either, especially for a five string. It's definitely on the heavier side though. Now, how much does a Music Man Big Al cost? I believe they started at around $1,500, but keep in mind this was around 2010 to 2015, the years they were produced. I don't believe they made that many of them, so these bases are relative rarities as opposed to, you know, a Stingray or a Sterling. 
Today on the used market, these can fetch well over $2,000. Now I know you're all wondering, what does this bass sound like? You guys know what you need to do? Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. <laughs> so what you've just heard was with the preamp bypassed, the tone at 100%, and the back two pickups in series. I think the best way to approach this bass is to go through the different pickup combinations first, bypassing the preamp, and we'll play with the tone control a little bit as well. And from there, we'll pick one or two pickup configurations and go through the different preamp settings, because this is a four-band preamp. There's a lot to go through there as well. So let's hear this one more time. This is with none of the pickup controls engaged and the preamp not engaged. So that is the back two pickups in series. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. Let's take the tone down to about 50% now. And here's the tone all the way down. Next, I'll take the tone control back all the way up, and we're gonna press the first button, engaging our neck pickup. Here's what that sounds like with the tone fully open. Very nice, very nice, a uh, fat p bassy kind of tone. Let's take the tone control down to about 50% now. And here's the tone all the way down. Very nice, very nice. Again, a nice fat p bassy sort of warm, fuzzy tone that's just mwah, beautiful, beautiful tone. Next, we're gonna engage our middle pickup here. This is gonna sound completely different. So I'm gonna have the tone fully open one more time. Here's the middle pickup.
Nice, nice. That sounds, I guess, more like a modern pea bass kind of deal. I don't know. It's a nice growly, bitey tone from this middle single coil pickup here. There is a ghost coil in play, as there is an absolutely zero single coil hum whatsoever in any of these settings. This is an absolutely silent bass that just sounds great. That kind of sounds weird out of context. It's a silent bass that just sounds great. How does it make a sound if it's silent? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Middle pickup, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the tone down to about 50% now. And here's the tone all the way down. Let's take the tone back all the way up and engage our bridge pickup. Here's what that sounds like soloed. Here's the tone at 50%. And the tone all the way down. Mm, the B string sounds the meatiest with the bridge pickup there. I might raise it just a little on the other two pickups, just on the B string side. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and turn the tone back up all the way and we will start pairing pickups. So with the bridge pickup engaged, I'm going to engage the neck pickup for almost a jazz bass kind of thing. Here's what that sounds like. Take the tone down to about 50%. and the tone all the way down.
Next, I'm going to disengage the bridge pickup and engage the middle pickup. So we kind of have uh, just the two front pickups engaged, negating the bridge pickup. Here's that with the tone all the way up. <laughs> and I'll take the tone down to about 50%. <laughs> and the tone all the way down. and the tone's all the way down, so I'll take the tone back up. I'm gonna disengage the neck pickup and we are gonna engage the bridge pickup for the back two in parallel. Now, if you may remember, with all three pickup controls not engaged, all three buttons up, that is both pickups in series, both back pickups. But this is both in parallel, so you may hear a difference. I'll do those back to back. <laughs> There was a bit of a difference there. So the first one was parallel and the second one was series. Next, I'll re-engage both rear pickups in parallel and we'll take the tone down to about 50%. Here's what that sounds like. And here's the tone all the way down. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the tone control back up all the way, and we are going to engage all three pickups together in parallel. Here's what that sounds like. <laughs> And we're going to take the tone down to 50%. <laughs> and the tone all the way down with all three pickups engaged.
Okay, so that was all the different pickup combinations here. I think I'm gonna pick two pickup combinations and uh, use those to play with the preamp. So the first one is uh, just the back two pickups in series, that is with none of the pickup controls engaged. I'm gonna engage the preamp now. This is an 18 volt four band preamp. So we have a dedicated bass control, treble control, as well as a high mid and low mid. And when the preamp is engaged, the tone control no longer functions. That passive tone control is only available when you're bypassing the preamp. So here's what the back to pickups in series sounds like with the preamp centered. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. So again, we have a four band preamp, high mids, low mids, bass and treble. Let's start by cutting the mids, leaving the bass and treble centered. In fact, let's boost those to about 50%. So we have the bass and treble boosted and the high mids and low mids cut. Very interesting, very interesting. So let's play with these mid controls now. I'm going to center the low mids right there, leaving the high mids cut. Here's what that sounds like. Next, we're gonna boost the low mids to about 50%, leaving the high mids cut and the treble and bass boosted as well. Now I'm going to cut the low mids entirely and bring the high mids up to center. So we have the high mids centered as well as the treble and bass boosted about 50%. Here's what that sounds like. <laughs> Now I'm gonna boost the high mids about 50%. Here's what that sounds like. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna center the preamp now and we're gonna engage our second pickup mode, which is just the neck pickup. I thought that was a nice uh, kind of opposite to the back two pickups in series. So here's what that sounds like with the preamp centered. Very nice, I, I like that tone a lot. Now let's cut the mids entirely, leaving the bass and treble, uh, they were centered before, let's boost those to about 50% now. Yeah, 
Yeah, so the scooped sound doesn't really work too well with this neck pickup. Let's start playing with these mids. I'll start engaging the low mids first, centering those with the bass and treble at 50% boost. <laughs> And here is the low mids at a 50% boost. And I'm going to cut those low mids now, and we're going to bring the high mids up to center. And let's boost those to about 50%. Now one thing I'm going to do that I didn't do in the previous configuration is let's boost both mids. Very nice. So I think that'll do it for the preamp exploration. I know there's a lot of different tones that you can get out of this, and you can really spend all day with these four band preamps. But I just wanted to give an overall idea of, you know, how this can shape the tone. I'm going to go ahead and re engage the back two pickups in series. I'm going to center the preamp, and let's see how she slaps. <laughs> Very nice. I find the string spacing a little bit cramped, especially with the kind of narrow nut width here. I'd appreciate a bigger neck. Uh, that's just my personal preference though. Many people find these uh, very comfortable. And leaving this configuration in place, I'm going to throw some drums behind this bass, and that will do it. <laughs> Thank you. 
So here are my final thoughts on the Ernie Ball Music Man Big Al 5. There is a lot to unpack, and I hope I at least did this bass justice in this video because there are so many different pickup configurations and tones to unpack here with this four band preamp, the uh, different pickup combinations with these three pickups and the buttons. There's just so much. This bass is very comfortable to play, though I do find the string spacing a bit tight for my preference, and it does suffer from that G-string issue that I mentioned with the Bongo 5 as well, where, uh, again, it can be a technique issue on my part, but uh, I think the G-string could be uh, not so close to the edge of the fingerboard. Uh, I find that, you know, it can occasionally fall off. It's not happening all the time, but it's just enough to be a little bit of a nuisance, in my opinion. Uh, other than that, though, this is a very fun bass to explore. I do feel like you need an engineering degree or something to truly understand <laughs> how to operate it. There's so many different combinations here, as I mentioned before, and so much to go through. Uh, it can be a bit daunting. There's a lot of great tones hidden in there, and... This is just a great bass from a certain period of the, you know, Music Man history that's not too far in the past, but uh, these basses and the reflexes, which share, I believe, the same four-band preamp, um, I guess weren't super well-received relative to, you know, Stingray stuff, and not many of them sold, and they were discontinued not long after being introduced. I mean, such is the way with many, you know, odd Music Man models like my Cutlass and the Caprice and all that jazz. But the Music Man Big Al is definitely a special instrument. You have that iconic and polarizing shape, the crazy electronics, and the single humbucker option also available if you choose that. Um, you have really cool finish options with this one, the tort and the vintage white, and the matching headstock. Uh, just a very, very cool bass. But that will do it for this video. Let me know which pickup combination was your favorite in the comments down below. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord channel, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Ernie Ball Music Man Big Al 5. And as always, until we groove again.